Hello guys, I hope you are doing well. I was completely occupied with travel plans and other personal works from past 10 days. I appreciate your patience on this. Based on one of our viewer comments, we wanted to make a session on fireproofing. Let's get into the session. While watching this video, at any point of time, if you feel like this video is informative and helpful for you, please do like and subscribe. In this session, we'll be covering up with different conditions of fireproofing, classification of fireproofing, how to represent fireproofing in drawings. In our first session, we discussed about advantages of structural steel. But there are also some disadvantages of using structural steel. One of the main disadvantages is that steel is not fire resistant and it will lose its strength properties at high temperature. So for structural steel, we need to apply some fire protective coatings. Now we'll see usual locations in a building where we need to provide fireproofing. So first thing is reception area, balconies and waiting halls. And then stairs and ramps. Why? Because while taking the safety measures, they will consider worst cases. When a building is caught by fire, they will make sure that there should not be more loss of people. So they will provide fireproofing for the steel at more crowded areas, example, example reception, waiting halls, balconies, etc. Also when building is caught by fire, people should evacuate the building as soon as possible through stairs and ramps. That is the reason why that stairs and ramps should be fireproofed so that people will get some time to evacuate the building. Now, fireproofing can be available from 30 minutes to 4 hours. Based on the mechanism, fireproofing is divided into two types. One is intumescent coatings Another one is spray applied fire resistance material. First we will look into intumescent coating. This blue color one. This blue color one is the intumescent coating. There is a thin layer of intumescent coating that we will apply on the surface of steel. When steel is caught by fire and at that high temperature, this paint will expand and form an insulation coating all around the steel. It can be up to 4 hour rated. But it is costly process. So we'll see what is 30 minutes and 4 hour rated. For example, if he indicates 30 minutes or 0.5 hour rated, it means that when this 0.5 hour rated coating is applied on the steel and if that steel is subjected to fire attack, then up to half an hour that steel will not lose its strength properties. So that is the meaning of 30 minute rated or 0.5 hour rated. In the same way, 1 hour rated, 2 hour rated, 3 hour rated, 4 hour rated also will be. Intumescent coating will be up to 4 hour rated. But it is a costly process. Now, second one is spray applied fire resistance material. We will apply a layer of cement slurry with high pressure jets on the surface of steel. This is very cost effective but the main disadvantage of this type of coating is that the weight of member 
will also be increased with this coating. That is the main disadvantage. I already said you in session 1, when the weight of member increases, so the extra load which is coming to its supporting member will also be increased. Thus, altogether it results to more foundation cost. So these are the two types of fireproofing. One is intermission painting and another is spray applied fire resistance. This also can be available up to 4 hour rated. This is cost effective but the weight of member increases if you apply this fire protective coating. Okay. Now what we should do if fire proofing is indicated to our steel. So in our project if fire proofing is indicated we need to mention whether a member is fully fire proof, complete fire proofed or partial fire proofed in erection plan like this. These things we will add in the sheet legend also. Okay, in the same way in shop drawings in BOM we will add it in remarks. Also, just below the assembly label, we will add fire proofed member. If this assembly is completely fire proofed, if an assembly is partially fire proofed, you will write partially fire proofed member. You will give the dimension to the extinction of fire proof portion in an assembly. Some clients will ask for the hatching. We will give mostly hatching dimension along with this tag fire proof all around the assembly. Okay. So what I have said now regarding the fire proofing representation in erection drawing and in shop drawing. This is just the basic representation. Some fabricators will ask for fire proofing or that intermittent coating which will be varying for gutter beams and it will vary based on beam profiles it will vary based on framing level and whether it is a gutter beam or infill beam for example if you consider a framing like this like this now this beam is connecting to both the columns at both ends this is a gutter beam even this is a gutter beam this is a gutter beam and this is a gutter beam and these three beams are gutter beams only why because these three beams are connecting to these two end beams and they are acting as supporting member for these infill beams so when you say a gutter beam Either beam will be connecting to columns at both ends or the beam will be acts as supporting member for other infill beams like this. Now this is a gutter beam because this is supporting these two beams. That kind of gutter beams should get separate thickness of intermittent coating like that there will be they will classify the paint thicknesses based on the beam and based on the framing and based on beam profile also. So those all the guidelines or instructions you need to check with the fabricator before proceeding and you need to follow the same without miss. So you should always remember that the text that you are keeping in shop drawing regarding fire proofing. If we didn't keep properly or we miss it to keep or we if we enter any wrong information that leads to failure of the member in a building. So fire proofing is very important. So that's all for now guys. Please comment below if you have any doubts. I'll make sure to answer those all. This is your Krishna signing off. Take care. And I would like to say one more thing uh, as we are already continuing steel detailing training sessions for beginners so 
I am covering a one topic in each session, but there are some glossaries or some abbreviations. We can say there are some terminology we use in steel detailing that I wanted to explain to everyone, but that is not a single concept, and I can't make all those in one video. So I'll be uploading those kind of glossaries and uh, terminology. through shorts so from my end you will get one shot for every one or two days okay please stay tuned and follow the shorts also